Well, the NHS has published a blog by Ashneen Benjamin, their quality, diversity, inclusion lead at the Nursing and Midwifery Council. This blog isn't about recently published Office of National Statistics data, which showed the ethnic breakdown of mortality rates for various diseases, revealing a lower mortality rate for many ethnic minority groups in several conditions. It wasn't a call for the government to implement the Commission for Race and Ethnic Disparities recommendation to create an Office for Health Disparities to, to examine the relationship between health and ethnicity. Nor was it a praise of the fact that vaccination rates for ethnic minority communities have increased substantially due to efforts to improve vaccine confidence. All of these possible statements would have been reasonable, balanced and evidence-based. Instead, the blog is called Dear White People in the UK and proceeds to demand white people read the canonical work of contemporary identity politics, Robin DiAngelo's White Fragility, and to educate themselves on their white privilege. Rather than challenge the racial thinking wherever it comes from, the blog calls upon its readers to embrace a new and acceptable form of racial thinking in the form of white racial self-consciousness, but to invert its meanings to become about unearned privilege, racism and guilt. It goes on to say, for white people who often don't see themselves in racial terms, you must not be defensive. Don't say I'm not political. You don't have to be vocal, but do listen. Work on your empathy. Be uncomfortable. Their words, not mine. Rather than encouraging people, regardless of race, to reject viewing themselves in racial terms, it demands that we see race, we judge by race, we treat people differently based off of their race. This portrays the very antithesis of the goal of the many unifying anti-racist struggles of the past, which was to emphasize that the thread that unites us all as human beings was far stronger and far more meaningful than any superficial racial category that society imposed upon us. That what matters is a common humanity, our individuality, the content of our character, not the color of our skin. The blog proceeds to list several books that we should all read, from René Edo Lodge's Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa by Peter Fryer, and you know what, to be honest, I welcome people being encouraged to pursue knowledge and read important works of history. However, there are also several authors that are strikingly missing from this reading list, black and ethnic minority intellectuals and authors who have a very different view on the legacy of historic racism and why certain racial disparities exist in the present. To name a few, The Anatomy by Racial Inequality by Glenn Lowry, Discrimination and Disparities by Thomas Sowell, The Content of Our Character by Shelby Steele. These are all intellectually sound, well-researched and philosophically coherent and compelling works, but they all in some form, reject the rigid racial thinking that underpins so much of today's popular anti-racist movements. Here's my alternative blog. Dear all people, embrace diversity of opinion, reject racial identity politics, whether it comes from the, the left or the right, judge and treat people based off of their behavior, not their skin color. And dear NHS and other publicly funded bodies using their resources to empower the managerial class to discipline and lecture people on their privilege, that's a poor use of public funds. Instead, money is better spent improving accessibility, trust and relationships with socially and economically deprived communities regardless of their background. Things that actually have a tangible benefit and don't divide and alienate people like this blog.